our nested loop section. So they're giving us some tricky challenges here. Um, when you can't figure out exactly what to do, just plug in all your code. So if I just started filling this with loops, I would start to see what I wanted to do. What I'm seeing here, when we're using loops, we're looking for things that are going to be the same. Obviously, I'm dropping four. We, we've got that, right? And when all else fails, ask yourself, what do I want the beaver to do first? Drop four. After the beaver drops four, I need the beaver to move over. So one, two, three times. There's another loop. So let me put uh, three times and we're moving that way. So because we know testing is important, right? So as you're working through your problems, run some of it and then see where you are. Leave the beaver there. Don't click the go back. So where the beaver is, this is very similar to that first one. So if I said, do that again, drop four, one, two, three, four, and move three, one, two, three, would that be a good thing? Absolutely. It wouldn't finish. We'd still have one more step, but it would take care of the next section. So there's our loop. And while we're here, let's take a look at those hints. They're not always super easy to figure out, but this says you're going to repeat two times and in there you're going to have a loop for drops and a loop for moves. So look at that. That's what we, we've got a, re, a loop for drop, a loop for move, and we just figured out we're going to add that two times. So I'm going to take these off. I'm going to put this here and you've got to be sure you're putting the right number and now I can put these in. And now it looks like the hint. And the last thing we're gonna do is drop one. So let's see how that looks. We're getting there. All right. Look at that, we did it. The key is always start small and test as you go and just keep asking what's next, what's next.